All right, here we go. Good evening and welcome to the April 14, 2020 meeting of the Quantic Township Council. Ms. Marsh. In accordance with the requirements of New Jersey's Open Public Meetings Act, notice of this meeting was included in the annual meeting notice, which was filed in the office of the township clerk, posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building, published as a legal notice in the Suburban Trends newspaper, and distributed to all persons requesting notice in accordance with township policy. Information on remote access was sent via email to the Suburban Trends, Daily Record, and Record newspapers, and was posted on the township's website and at the entrance to the municipal building. Excellent. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a prayer and a national moment of thanks for individuals serving our nation. Okay. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. To the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands. One, One nation, nation under God, God, God indivisible, indivisible liberty, liberty, with liberty and justice, justice for all. all. Most gracious Providence, we ask that you bless this governing body with an abundance of wisdom and understanding so that every deliberation will result in actions which will promote the common good and the general welfare for all the people of Pequannock Township. Amen. 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 All right, that went well. Yes. Clerk, please call the roll. Mrs. Florence Lynch? Here. Cole is absent. Mr. Phelan? Here. Mrs. Russell? Here. Mayor Cole. Mayor Hurd, sorry. <laughs> I'm here. Thank you. Uh, before we get started, ask, I would like to ask Mr. Brewer to explain the format of this meeting. Mr. Brewer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as we are all on Zoom because of the Corona COVID-19 pandemic, we are conducting this meeting electronically. Ms. Marsh uh, provided the information about where it was noticed. From a formatting perspective, I have the control of attendees versus panelists. Attendees cannot be seen, but they are able to be heard. At the points where you will call for anyone to participate, I would ask any of the attendees to raise their hand. I can then call on them and unmute them and they are able to speak to the body. Excellent, well, thank you, Mr. Brewer. Now let's begin with tonight's agenda. There are no presentations scheduled for this evening. Uh, at this time, there are no reports or comments from any of the, I'm sorry. At this time, are there reports or comments from any of the volunteers serving our community? If so, please raise your hand and wait to be recognized. Mr. Mayor, no hands have been raised. All right, thank you, sir. Next on the agenda is public comments. Uh, this public comment period limited to a total of 30 minutes. It's an additional period for public comment is reserved later in the meeting. Individuals are required to limit their questions and comments to three okay. minutes. If anybody wishes to address the council, please raise your hand and wait to be recognized and provide your name and address for the record. Mr. Mayor, no hands have been raised. Excellent, thank you very much. Uh, there being no additional public comments, we will continue with the agenda. Next on the agenda is our manager's report, Mr. Brewer. Uh, thank you, sir. As is self-evident, uh, we continue to deal with the dynamic circumstances associated with coronavirus and COVID-19. Um, importantly, municipal operations continue as was previously discussed, we've altered our operational approach to make sure we ensure the safety of our workforce and those people we interact with. So the municipal building remains closed to be able to come in as do other municipal buildings. Uh, but we're continuing to deal with property maintenance issues. The police department continues to respond. Um, all municipal operations continue, most notably the first aid squad, which is an autonomous organization. I'm sure someone will get to this later, but they're doing, they're doing the hero's work along with the, the fire department and the police department. Uh, the posts that have been published to the website have been provided in the council's packet again just to create a timeline of where we are with different things. Um, but since that was disseminated, the governor did issue uh, Executive Order 118, which called for the closing of parks at the county and state level. Uh, the township of Aquanic was put into a position where we had no choice but to close Mountainside Park because of a massive increase in usage. I assume because other hiking trails were closed, but our other municipal parks remain open. We're monitoring them continuously with the police department, the park rangers and other staff. So far our residents have been using them responsibly and we feel that that's an important activity that people should be able to take advantage of. 
Um, with respect to uh, solid waste, that's a discussion item for later on in the agenda. Uh, regarding FEMA and the appeal of the preliminary flood information rate maps, the National Institute of Building Sciences is moving forward with the scientific resolution panel. The panel has convened, they have met, they've established the schedule for the Township of Pequannock's uh, appeal. We will be providing an oral argument with Mr. Scoopian, the professional engineer who's the, the uh, water flooding expert on April 30th of 2020 in the afternoon. And then the report will be issued by the SRP uh, by July 7th of 2020. So once again, uh, April 30th, we will be making our oral arguments and a report will be available on July 2nd. As soon as that's received, it will be made available to the council and the public. Uh, last thing real quickly, um, with respect to the 2020 budget, which was introduced three weeks ago, which seems almost like a lifetime at this point. A lot has changed in three weeks. Uh, when the budget was introduced, my recommendation was it was the budget as we currently knew it. Uh, I think the budget as we currently know it remains. There's legislation being discussed. Uh, we're reviewing revenues to determine you know, where we are in terms of the year and, and what our options will be in terms of handling appropriations and potential losses of revenue. Uh, my recommendation to the council would be to proceed with the, the public hearing on April 28th, but to push a potential adoption forward at least a couple of weeks. Um, once we have more information on what legislation and what tools might be available, uh, we are required to adopt the budget by May 30th or the first meeting thereafter. So we have until the first meeting in June. So I just wanted to update the council that it is something that's being reviewed. Uh, it's something we're paying a lot of attention to. And, you know, hopefully we'll be able to have better information to provide you with when we ultimately adopt the budget for 2020. That's my report, Mr. Mayor. Excellent. Thank you, Ms. Brewer. Just a quick question on the pre firma For the April 30th meeting, I presume that's going to be like a video meeting like we're doing now? Correct. Okay. All right. Excellent. Public hearings. There being no public hearing scheduled for this event. Ordinances for introduction. Uh, next on the agenda, there are no ordinances scheduled for introduction at this time. To the resolutions, the next agenda item is resolutions. Mrs. Marsh. Beginning with resolution R2020-104, reducing sewer assessment balances for, that's for 512 Turnpike. R2020-105, reducing sewer assessment balances, and that one is for 363 Route 23. R2020-106, authorizing the execution of an agreement between the Township of Pequannock and the First Reformed Dutch Church of Pumpton Plains for the use of the church parking lot. R2020-107, authorizing the execution of an interlocal agreement between the Township of Pequannock and the Board of Education of Pequannock Township for vehicle maintenance and repair service. And R2020-108, approving payment of the itemized claims as set forth on the April 9th, 2020 bill list and 2015 and 2016 FEMA elevation escrow list. Excellent, thank you. Are there any comments on the resolutions from council? Excellent, seeing none, is there a motion? I'm sorry, did somebody have a comment? I was just going to say, um, when we make the motion, should we pull out? Um, I have to recuse myself from one of them, so um, I don't know whether to pull it out separate or just, um, I guess we can just go through them and then recuse ourselves on the ones that we have to recuse ourselves on. So, uh, Robert? That is typically what we do. So okay. when we come to your vote, if you would just recuse yourself on the one, I think we'll be fine. Excellent. Are there any other comments? Is there a motion to adopt these resolutions? I'll make a motion to adopt resolutions 2020-104 through 2020-108. And I'll second. Excellent, thank you. Roll call. This is Florence Lynch. Yes to all, um, and I recuse myself from R2020-105. Thank you, Mr. Phelan. Yes to all. Mrs. Russell. Yes. Mayor Hurd. Yes. Next on the agenda item, there are items for discussion, which is a solid waste and recycling bid specifications. Uh, Mr. Brewer. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. As is included in the packet, which I forgot to mention at the outset of the meeting, uh, the agenda packet was published on the website for anyone who would like to follow along with it that is in the public. 
Um, the solid waste recycling and vegetative waste collection contracts come to a conclusion on October 31st, 2020. Those three contracts are five-year contracts and were bid in 2015 contemporaneously. The bid specs have been updated uh, with the necessary changes and Mr. Ustaik has reviewed them. Uh, basically, they're very similar to what they were in 2015. Uh, the levels of service that were asked for in the options have been continued. For example, the Board of Education is an alternative bid, which was exercised previously and you know, saves the taxpayer money, which I think is a good thing. The bids are due back on June 30th of 2020. You know, once we receive the bids back, assuming the time frame is, is continued or whenever we do receive them back, I would recommend that if the Board of Education is going to continue, that we do an interlocal service agreement just to memorialize that. Currently, we're just billing them for it. Uh, but the, the, all of the current levels of services are included, as well as an additional option within the recycling bid specification for alternating service on Mondays uh, between the two primary categories of, of collectible material, bottles and cans one Monday and uh, paper and cardboard the next Monday, alternating throughout the year. There's an option that has bottles and cans on, on Monday or, or one of the materials on Monday and then again on Thursday for what is twice a week collection. I think it's good to get a price on that, but that might get, get costly. Uh, ultimately, uh, the goal is to get these back in time to review them. Uh, the solid waste bids are required to be out for a minimum of 60 days. So if there are any issues, you want to start early in the year and address them and be able to go back out if you have to and not have a, an, an emergency where you run out of time on your contract. Um, there are a couple of things that I just want to, you know, one thing I want to ask about and, and one thing I want to mention, uh, but before I do that, are there any options that the council would like to see that were not included in the specifications as drafted? Okay. Council, any questions? The only question I have is, uh, do you think by switching to that stream, I mean, how much do you think the cost is going to go up for our residents? Or you have no idea? Well, the, the recycling specification has uh, one option, which is the Monday, Thursday collection. One option, which is alternating Mondays. And both of those are dual stream. And then it has single stream Mondays. So all of the options are there. It's just, it'll become a question of which option from the menu do we ultimately want to choose from. And we'll be able to make that based upon actual cost information. So they're so, all there. So we're all putting the we're putting the bid spec out with a couple other options. So this way, when everything comes back to us, we can pick and choose what's gonna make the most sense and how it can be cost effective with them, correct? Correct, and we need to clearly define what those options are in order to get a, a good price back. Okay. And well, you know, I, I understand a committee worked to put the specifications together in 2015. I commend the committee, I think they did a great job. It's a good document. Um, a couple of updates that Bob and I worked on, but otherwise, you know, pretty much staying status quo with that one additional option for recycling with the once a week collection alternating to see what the price looks like. If there's not right. a significant difference between prices, maybe it makes sense to have it twice a week, but right now we don't know that. Right. Uh, the the question that I have where I'm looking for some direction from council is the specifications from 2015 call for any skipped collection as a result of a holiday or inclement weather to be made the following day. The challenge that exists with that construct is uh, the collection companies dedicate their resources to towns every day. So as you may recall through seeing either you know, discussion among the community or, or, or chatter online, when we have a skipped collection day, the hauler then tries to get the trucks in towards the end of the day the next day. If there's a lot of material out, they don't get it all collected. So then we're on to the, the third day and there's a little bit of confusion. In the past, what I've put forth was a recommendation to have a day that's skipped because of a, a holiday or inclement weather is skipped. So that way the public knows, okay, it's gonna snow out like, like crazy. I'm just gonna leave my garbage cans in my, my garage and I'm not gonna worry about tomorrow or the next day. I know they're coming again on Thursday. Um, I think it's clearer, advance, it's easier but it's a shift in policy. So I wanna check with the council to see if they're amenable to having implemented with the new contract, or if they wanna keep it the way it is now with uh, the collection attempted to be the next day. I don't think we should attempt the next day. I think it's no, I, more money. It's just not worth it. 
as long as the residents know up front, I think it's better to skip it. Um, this way they'll know, they won't say, where's the trucks? They know, they're just skipping. Yeah, it always seems to be an issue when, <laughs> should I put it out, should I not put it out? And then they come late, we just don't know. I, I think policy is better that if it hits on a, uh, uh, a day, a snowstorm, um, anything like that, oh. it's just, we don't do it. And if we did once a month collection, I could see an alternative, but because of the frequency of collection being what it is, um, if everyone's comfortable with that, then I'll move forward uh, with that in the specification. In the last- did you, okay. did you say that also affects holidays or just uh, snowstorms and stuff? Uh, any, any, any collection skipped due to holiday or in clinic. Right, okay, great. Right. But Adam, um, that's a major holiday. Holidays as defined within the specification. Right, so, we, so, so you'll state uh, Thanksgiving, New Year's, Memorial Day, uh, Christmas, or holidays. Yes, I can, so they're, they're can listed decide. in spec. I don't have it right in front of me, but yeah, it, it's, it's, the, it's really the holidays that the transfer station and the other facilities are closed and the hauler doesn't have anywhere to bring the material. I believe there are five days. Mm -hmm. Kyle, did you have a question about it? No, I, I, I think last year was more important because I didn't like Christmas land. Christmas was right on like that holiday thing. So I, I don't think it'll be an issue. Um, Christmas and New Year's are the big ones. Right. Um, and I think as long as people know and we let them know ahead of time, they're fine with whatever. Because it's true. What happens is when you do it the next day, unfortunately, the companies have other towns that are scheduled day so we wind up being late night or people don't get picked up and right. then and then they're all upset because they didn't get picked up whereas they just know eh, it's coming next week right. okay Good. anything else mr brewer well and then the last thing real quickly the um the current contract includes collection of recyclables at the american legions and the knights of columbus on lincoln park road I can understand why that was done in 2015. Uh, trucks are on the road anyway. The material was of value at that point to the hauler. I did not include them in the specification as currently drafted because as we've discussed throughout the budget process to dispose of recyclables now has a significant cost, approximately $90 a ton. Uh, but again, that, that represents a change, which I will have to notify those people of. Uh, again, the contract goes until October 31st, but as we don't, have the ability to provide it to you know the entire community like that and there's now a cost involved that was why i eliminated agreed i understand okay so i agree unfortunately our costs are going up uh, especially with recycling there's a lot of unknowns right there and i think uh, we have to be very careful budgeting going forward so unfortunately, people see significant increases in the service and, and the goal with the specs is to try to create enough options you know, uh, Denville recently went out and went from single stream with Morris County to dual stream and the price difference of what they were going to pay moving forward, it was much less. So hopefully we'll have good data to make decisions with uh, in June. Okay. Yep. okay. okay. All right. Anything else? No, that's all. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Next on the agenda is council reports and announcements. Councilwoman Florence Lynch. Yes. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the first thing I wanted to bring up to council's attention, especially we're talking about um, budgets and everything. I had a conversation with Adam uh, regarding a call I received um, asking the council if we would consider um, a small donation to the food pantry or any other financial need in the community that the council thought appropriate as a gesture, you know, during this rough time. And uh, we also know we're going through these financial challenges with the budget due to the pandemic. So with that being said, the discussion becomes, you know, do we, can we, do we feel like we should do this? Um, as you know, we have a $5,000 budget in for the Memorial Day Parade. That's not happening this year. It was suggested that maybe we take $1,000 of it and donate it to the food pantry or some other need and I was asked to have that discussion. So I'm not sure how we feel about that because I know there are challenges with the budget 
I know there's a lot of people assisting with the needs of the food pantry and the children's lunches and the needs at Chilton Hospital and the like. So, you know, I don't know how you feel about taking a thousand dollars of the budget to donate to something like that. And I wanted to get your thoughts about allocation to the food pantry or whatnot. We, we canceled the Memorial Day Parade? Well, we believe it's going to be canceled. We didn't. It's actually the Legion's it. event, too. Right. And yeah. it is a Legion's event. Right. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I, that was the first time that, that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Truthfully, that's where the call came from, from the Legion, um, about if that would be a nice gesture. They're assuming that it's going to be canceled. But again, it's, you know, taxpayer money. It's not the Legion's money, but that money is allocated for the Legion to do the parade. So. I think you're going to have a lot of people who are going to suddenly have problems paying their property taxes. Yeah. 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 Unfortunately, I, I think because of the situation and mm -hmm. we are in uncharted territories and it's absolutely fluid. I, I think, I think we just have to be very careful with our budget. We have to be mm -hmm. very, mm -hmm. uh, okay. I, I'm yeah. going to probably say no at this time. Yeah. I would say no too. Okay. And, and, and if I could just give my recommendation, exactly what everybody right. said, there's going to be a resolution that we're working on now for the 28th of April, authorizing the finance officer to issue tax anticipation notes. Tax anticipation notes are issued when you don't realize the revenue you need, and we have an obligation to make the County of Mars whole and the Board of Education whole before we make ourselves whole. So we may have to actually go out and borrow money just to operate. So while right. I appreciate the grand gesture and it's a great idea, Unfortunately, we, we, we might leave ourselves short and we have emergency first responders that we need to keep on the road. Right. And that's the conversation I had with Adam and uh, that was his recommendation. And I agree. I get it. Um, I just, you know, we said it was, we'd bring it up just to make sure everybody agrees with that. Um, it was a nice gesture, but we are going to have some challenges. So you yeah. agree with that? Um, uh, you agree with that as well, Kyle? Yeah, I agree. Okay. I think we got to yeah. wait and see where we're at. Yeah. I, listen, I, I don't think any of us are happy about making that decision, but unfortunately, yeah, yeah we're gonna we, we have some, right now. we do have some challenges. So, okay, well, thank you for that. Um, in addition to that, um, uh, I'm just gonna real quick go over my committees. The Economic Development Committee they did cancel their meeting in March. I did send around an email to the committee today to solicit feedback on on whether they'd like to hold a meeting this month. Um, which would be next Wednesday, April 22nd at 7.30. I told them if they'd like to set up a Zoom meeting, uh, we'd be glad to help them set that up if, if they need help setting that up. So I'm waiting to hear back from the committee. If they decide not to have a meeting, um, we'll update the website. If they decide to have a meeting, I'll have Carol um, set that up and, and put, it, you know, put it on the website as a public meeting. Um, the flood committee, they canceled their meeting for this month. However, we did receive the April report, report from Jennifer, our flood uh, officer, uh, resilience officer, to summarize her report real quick. Uh, the 2015 elevation grant, that expires later this year. There were a total of 26 applicants out there. Uh, from that one, looks like we're gonna have a total of 19 completed out of that. Out of the 2016, we had 23 applicants. Looks like we're going to have 18 completed out of that. Uh, 2018 grant, 15 homes are still awaiting the FEMA funding uh, release. Obviously, that's delayed due to the pandemic. Um, and we're still waiting on the 2019 grant decision. There were 16 applicants there. So it's moving along, but of course, it's a slower process now with the pandemic, but hopefully we'll hear a decision by summer, hopefully, for the 2019 grant. Um, Adam already talked about, I was going to mention uh, the map appeals. We know the, the re scientific resolution panel was set. They're going out, they're going April 30th. As Adam stated, oral arguments will be made and a decision and a report by July 2nd. Um, Due to the pandemic, there's a 120 day grace period for insurance premiums under the NFIP. And of course, everybody knows about the other, um, uh, the executive order uh, that the governor signed for ins other insurance <coughs> premiums. Um, finally, I just wanted to uh, 
say how grateful we are for our healthcare workers on the front line who are caring for the sick. And I uh, want to thank all who are working so hard. And I want to thank our residents for doing their part um, to make sure they maintain their social distancing. And, um, you know, we, we always are so proud of what the police and the fire department and the first aid squad is doing. I mean, they're putting their lives on the line every day. Um, so thank you. Thank them for that. And I'm especially proud of our community and want to thank everyone for, for their donations and all they're doing to support those working um, during this critical time and supporting those in need. Uh, we just have an awesome town. So uh, thanks. That's it. Yes, we do. Well, thank you very much, Councilman Phelan. Um, all my committees have been canceled or meetings have been canceled. So I have nothing to report. I do want to reiterate what um, Melissa just said about all our people in town and all our volunteers. Thank you, sir. All right, Deputy Mayor Russell. All my committees were canceled also. And once again, we just, uh, our first responders are doing a fantastic job. We, we hear the calls that go out. We know um, it's a scary time and they're just, they're doing an amazing job. Um, shout out. Um, feel better. Uh, Dave Cole, he is doing better. He's home. So um, wish him the best of luck if he's watching. I don't know. Is he? he might be sleeping. Um, <laughs> other than that, I think everybody's doing a great job. And our police department, they have it so tough because, you know, they can't put everybody on a shift together and this, that, and the other thing. So, you know, just shout out to everybody. Everybody's doing a fantastic job and I'm proud of each and every one. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. For mine, uh, historic committee, we uh, came together via Zoom. We talked about the Martin Burry House, um, which is progressing even during the pandemic, which is great. Uh, the wedding is on hold until further notice. On a bunch of other meetings that I've been on, my life is just meetings. Um, <laughs> so community partners of hope, um, they are doing an amazing job. Uh, they are bringing together food for our uh, Chilton Hospital employees. Just to give you an idea, they are now providing 121 meals a night and we're booked out for three weeks, which is great. Uh, they have raised $17,670 on the GoFundMe page. Um, Stephen Crass, Cass, I'm sorry, Steve, I said your name wrong, from Chilton. They are, they said that the food is great. They really do appreciate everything that our township and the surrounding townships are doing. We are really coming together. Um, they do have immediate needs for a few materials, alcohol wipes, bleach wipes, PPE, face shields, and um, oh, head coverings. So the one issue that they're having is the face mask with the elastic, elastic bands. Uh, when you're a healthcare worker and you're wearing these for 10 or 12 hours a day, it really starts cutting into your ears and it's very uncomfortable. So if there is a way to come up with something that can alleviate that to give them a little more comfort, as well as uh, ladies with longer hair to be able to keep the hair under, they have said that um, there are some uh, head coverings with buttons that can work. Uh, Steve is coming up with a couple of designs, so that is the biggest uh, help or need right now. On to other things. Uh, first Aid Squad. They do ask that when they are called out, and our First Aid Squad is doing an amazing, an amazing job. I mean, these guys are volunteers, and they're still showing up, uh, whereas other towns are not showing up. So definitely got to give these guys kudos. With that said, you know, their job is 10 times harder right now. Uh, when they get called to go and see somebody, they have to suit up outside, which takes longer. Um, just asking that if residents do see them show up on the scene and they're outside getting uh, ready, they have to get uh, face masks on, they have to suit up, they have to do a whole uh, the rigmarole. And um, if you could just, you know, uh, sit back and let them do their job. They would really appreciate that because it, it takes much longer to get into the house now. Um, but they definitely appreciate your support. I don't know if anybody got a chance to see the Parade of Heroes today outside of Chilton, but I got to tell you, it was awe-inspiring to say the least. Uh, there was 
so many towns that participated in this. We had police, we had EMS, we had fire. Uh, it, it literally brought uh, tears to my eyes. I am so proud of this community. I am so proud of Chilton. I am so proud of all of our first responders in our town and in others. It really, thank you very much for keeping us safe. Another note, Boys and Girls Club, uh, they raised uh, money for power bars because another issue that Chilton is having is during the day, our doctors and nurses and support staff are working so much that sometimes they don't even have time to stop and get something to eat. So they did ask for power bars. So Boys and Girls Club stepped up. They literally got a full pallet of 2,000 power bars dropped off. And I hear there's another thousand coming. So good job. That's awesome. And that's just another point of how our community is coming together. Again, I'd love to uh, thank Kathleen Edwards Chase and Doug Cook because they really are stepping up with the Community Partners of Hope and everybody that is on that phone call. I really do appreciate it from our schools to Lincoln Park to everywhere else. Uh, what else do we have? I was on a uh, briefing with the governor's office and Commissioner uh, Jennifer Persilli. I think I got that right. Um, very interesting. You have to remember that our first case with COVID was on March 4th, so we're only four weeks into this. Uh, there are a lot of cases, as we know. Uh, there are currently 101 in Pequonic as of today. With that said, we're hoping that the peak is going to be anywhere from the 15th to early May. There's three different models that they are tracking. So at the end of the day, what this means is we're doing what's right. Remember, stay out there. Uh, keep social distancing, make sure you're wearing a mask. If you go into the store, uh, shop right or stop and shop or Lowe's or Home Depot, you must wear a mask now. You will be uh, waiting online to get in. Uh, please, uh, if you're gonna go out to run or walk or do all that, that's great. I think we have to keep ourselves in good health, but you know, no coffee clutches. Make sure that we stay away uh, from everybody else. Say hi from across the street. You can talk across the street, that's great. But uh, please, keep away by at least six feet and wash your hands a lot. That is the biggest uh, suggestion that they all have. Other than that, that is all I have. Thank you very much to our first responders. You guys are awesome. I can't say enough about you, uh, whether it's uh, EMS, EMS, first aid squad, company one, company two, police, you guys rock. All right, with that said, next on the agenda is public comments. If anybody wishes to address a council, please raise your hand and wait to be recognized and provide your name and address for the record. Mr. Mayor, no hands have been raised. All right, seeing none, let's go to approval of minutes. Next on the agenda is minutes for approval. We have three sets of minutes, March 10th, 2020 budget workshop, March 10th, 2020 regular meeting. March 24th, 2020 regular meeting. Are there any comments on these meetings from council? Nope. Is there a motion to approve these meetings? I'll make I'll a motion to approve the meetings. Sorry, Melissa. Rich That's Dodd. okay. Can I get a second? I'll second them. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, closed session. There are no items for closed session discussing. Excellent, well, thank you everybody. I appreciate your time this evening. There being no further business, is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion. I think a motion to adjourn. Uh, I'll second. That to Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> All, in <laughs> All, All in favor. Aye. 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 Excellent. Meeting adjourned at 7.34 p.m. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, everybody. See you. Good, Good job. Stay safe. You right. too. Stay safe, everybody. Bye-bye. Have a good Bye. night. Thank you. Good All right. Night. Have a Bye-bye.